In this video, we're going to be talking about how to identify the shape of a surface with the given vector equation. And with these particular problems, we've got two of them. We're going to look at the surface of the vector equation given by r of the parameters u and v, which is going to be equal to quantity u plus v times i plus quantity 3 minus v times j plus quantity 1 plus 4u plus 5v times k. We're going to start with this example and then we're going to look at this one as well to give you a couple ideas about how to go about identifying the surface of these vector equations. So the first thing we want to do with these type of problems is identify parametric equations of the surface. And the way that we're going to do that when it comes to a vector equation in the form r of uv is we're going to take the coefficients on our i, j, and k values here. So we're going to say that x is equal to the coefficient on our i term, so x is equal to u plus v, that y is equal to the coefficient on j, 3 minus v, and that z is equal to the coefficient on k, 1 plus 4u plus 5v. Once we have parametric equations that define the surface, what we want to do is eliminate our parameters. So we know that our parameters are u and v because we have r of u and v here. So we want to eliminate u and v and get an equation in terms of only x, y, and z. The way that we're going to do that is by solving these first two equations, x and y here, for u and v and then plugging them into our equation for z. So we're going to try to get an equation for z in terms of x and y only. So what we'll do is solve this first equation, x equals uv for u. u only appears in this equation, it doesn't appear in our equation for y, so we need to get the value of u from this x equation. So solving this for u, we'll just subtract v from both sides and we'll get u is equal to x minus v. We want to use our equation for y to find a value for v, and in order to do that, we'll just add v to both sides. We'll get v plus y is equal to 3. So then subtracting y from both sides, we'll get v is equal to 3 minus y. Now we can take these values for u and v and plug them into our equation for z. So we'll say z is equal to 1 plus 4 times u. So we said that u was equal to x minus v. So we want to go ahead and say x minus, but instead of putting in v, because remember we're trying to eliminate u and v, we have this equation for v defined in terms of y. And we want this in terms of x and y, so we'll go ahead and substitute 3 minus y into this v value here. So we'll get 3 minus y, like this. And then coming back here, we'll say plus 5 times v. So plus 5 times v, we know that v is 3 minus y. So now we just want to simplify this as much as we can. We'll get 1 plus, distributing the 4 across the value inside the brackets here, we'll get 4x minus 4 times 3 is 12. Here we have minus a negative y, so that's going to be plus y. Multiplying by the 4, we get plus 4y, and then plus 15 minus 5y. Simplifying further, we'll put our x's first, we'll get 4x here. Then we have plus 4y minus 5y is a minus y, so minus y. And then 1 minus 12 plus 15 is a plus 4. Now what we can do is arrange all of our variables on one side and have our constant on the other. So we'll subtract z from both sides and subtract 4 from both sides, and we'll end up with 4x minus y minus z is equal to negative 4. And what we can tell from looking at this equation is that we have the equation of a plane here because we have all linear variables. x, y, and z are all first degree linear values. We don't have any squared terms here, so we know that this is the equation of a plane. At this point, we could say that the surface given by the vector equation r of uv is a plane, but we'd like to give more information about the plane if we can. So if you get to this point and you've identified that you do in fact have a plane, one thing you can do is take your parametric equations of the surface for x, y, and z that we found earlier and configure them a little bit. Notice that our equation for z here, we have a constant plus some value in terms of u plus some value in terms of v. That's the format that we want to get each of our parametric equations into. So what we're going to do is bring all of these over here and we're going to try to copy this format. So we want x equals a constant plus a function of u plus a function of v. So we'll say x equals, the only constant we have here is a plus 0, so we're going to get 0 plus, and we already have u plus v, so 0 plus u 
plus v. We'll say y is equal to, here we already have the 3, the constant, so we'll say 3. We have no u function inside of our y equation, so we're going to go ahead and say plus 0u and then minus v. And then for z, we have our constant, our function of u and our function of v, so we'll leave it exactly as is and get 1 plus 4u plus 5v. The reason that we wanted to get our parametric equations into this format is because now we can easily pull information out of the right hand sides here to give more information about the plane. We know that the plane runs through the point, plane through the point 0, 3, 1, and we pull that directly from our constants here 0, 3, and 1. We also know that the plane contains the vectors 1, 0, 4, 1, 0, 4, which we get from taking the coefficients on our u functions here. So we have 1, 0, and 4. And we know it also contains the vector 1, negative 1, 5, which we get by taking the coefficients on our v functions. So we get 1, negative 1, and 5, like this. So by putting these parametric equations into this exact format here, constant plus function of u plus function of v, we can identify that the plane runs through the point given by each of the three constants and contains the vectors given by the coefficients on the u and v functions here. Now let's go ahead and look at another example where we don't just have linear values of our parameter variables u and v. In this example, we have the vector equation r of st, which is given by these component values s, t, and t squared minus s squared. So this could also be written s times i plus t times j plus quantity t squared minus s squared times k. So we could have been given this in this form. We also could have been given r of uv in this format here. Either way, it's equal to the same thing. These are just coefficients on i, j, and k, respectively. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find parametric equations of the surface by pulling out each of these components. So we're going to say x is equal to s, y is equal to t, and z is equal to t squared minus s squared. And again, we want to eliminate the parameters s and t and get an equation for z in terms of x and y only. These parametric equations are easier because we already have x equals s and y equals t, and those are easily defined. So we have z equals, we know that t is equal to y, so we're going to plug y in for t and get y squared. And we have x equals s, so we're going to plug x in for s and get minus x squared. Now this is where your knowledge of quadric surfaces really comes into play. We want to be able to recognize at this point that this equation we have here for z is very similar to the standard equation of a hyperbolic paraboloid. Remember that a hyperbolic paraboloid looks like this. If we take vertical cross sections of this surface, we get parabolas. If we take horizontal cross sections of this surface, we get hyperbolas. So this is a hyperbolic paraboloid. And the standard equation of a hyperbolic paraboloid is z over c is equal to y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared. And we can see that that's very similar to the equation we have here. All we need to do to make it exactly the same is say that we have z over 1, we have y squared over 1 squared, and we have x squared over 1 squared. And now we can identify values for a, b, and c. When we have the standard form like this, we know that the variable that isn't squared, in our case z, defines the axis that the hyperbolic paraboloid opens around. So we know that it opens up around the axis z, just like our picture here. We also know that this value here for c, we have c is equal to 1, that if c is positive, that the hyperbolic paraboloid opens up in the positive direction of the z-axis, and if c is negative, then the hyperbolic paraboloid opens down in the negative direction of the z-axis. So because our c value is positive, it's positive 1, we know that in fact our hyperbolic paraboloid does look like this, it opens up in the positive direction of the z-axis. We also know that this hyperbolic paraboloid is centered about the origin because essentially here we have z minus 0 in the numerator, we have y minus 0 squared, and we have x minus 0 squared. And so we take those 0 values and we know that this hyperbolic paraboloid is centered at 0, 0, 0. 
So if we want to summarize here what we know, we can say that we have a hyperbolic paraboloid. We can say that the center is at 0, 0, 0. And we can say that it opens upward about the z-axis.